In this week's video, we are heading deep into the Icelandic highlands where I hosted a group along with Jerome. We visited many different locations, but in this video, I'll just focus on the ones I have not photographed before. And wow, did the photos turn out great. And we have now arrived at Kalinga Fjetl, 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 Kalinga Fjetl. <laughs> you... <laughs> Say it. Kertingafjall. Whatever he said. So uh, it's a really, really beautiful hotspot area. I've never been here before, so it's actually quite exciting because I've not been to quite a few places by now here in Iceland. But first time here, there's of course a lot of like traditional photos from this place. And we're basically just moving through it, taking it hill by hill. Right now, we have been photographing down this trail up towards this hill here and then I have been standing here posing while the group has been shooting from this place here so now I'm just like taking the photo myself and now we're moving longer in there and shooting down here also. It is an obvious place to also photograph abstracts so the long lens on trying to find some beautiful patterns in all these beautiful colored hills. There's a lot of like sulfur so there's like blue colors, red colors, and then we have the green moss, like, it's almost a little bit too messy sometimes, but that's what the long lens is for, to just like zoom in and get that one special shot. One example would be over here. We have this small waterfall. So when the steam is surrounding it properly, then we take the shot. And it was basically the same idea here, where I would pose here, and then we just wait for the steam to be in a cool shape around that area. So we have slowly like just been walking around this beautiful area and bouncing ourselves back and right now I'm just taking like the most photographed scene in, in this place and it is this one. So using my Tamron 50-400 at 200mm, zooming in to this area right here. And it gives me a composition that looks something like this here and you can really see how all the steam is like coming around people and it's just about like finding that one little person walking on that ridge. The only problem though is that there are just so many people, there are so many tourists here today so I will definitely have to do some time blending here. So I'm just taking a lot of different photos where the fog or the steam is optimal and then I'm going to blend it together somehow so I will only have like one person walking on that ridge because right now it's it's a lot If you want to learn how I time blend my photos, generally blend them, work with luminosity masking, control colors and clean up photos and much much more, be sure to enroll in my huge Photoshop for landscape photographers post processing course. It is here where I share all the different editing techniques I use to produce my photos. I've designed it so it's easy to get started whether you use Camera Raw or Lightroom. There is a link and a coupon code to save some money upon enrolling in the course down in the description of the video. 
Even though the Highlands of Iceland is absolutely gorgeous from the ground, it is when you take to the air and fly the drone that it really pops. And that is why flying the drone above these beautiful landscapes is a big part of this workshop. The probably most aesthetic water passage you can make in Iceland is on top of this waterfall. I will, however, highly advise against hammering your car into a river like the person did here while we were standing and filming it with a drone. You can, and most likely will, completely wreck your car and there is a long, long way out of the highlands. We of course also returned to some of the locations that we visited last year, one of which is these red craters that just looks amazing in the sunset, and of course Malifetl, which is a beautiful green mountain located in a black desert. We also got quite a lot of beautiful photos from the ground. One of my favorites is this shot of Hawifoss, where we got a beautiful beam of light hitting the waterfall. And deep within the highlands, we got these beautiful moody photos on a very, very rainy day. However, some of my favorites are actually these two photos here from southern Iceland. You still need a 4x4 to get to this place, unless you want to walk for long. But they actually turned out really, really well, despite we actually photographed them in the middle of the day, but the moody clouds did help out. So it is right now the last day of the workshop. We have had a blast. The highlands are just always absolutely gorgeous. Sadly, my drone has some vision sensor calibration error, so I cannot fly it here on the last day, but uh, have the rest of the group flying up here behind me. And then we have Wayne standing down here in the background photographing with the long lens, me too. Because as you can see here, in this background right here, we have this beautiful glacier river. And it kind of makes like this S-bend leading in to this big rock, which is an old island right here. But because of geology and all the sediments coming down from Katla, which is up here in the background, Katla being a big volcano. I can't see it because of the clouds, but it's up there somewhere. This has just been filling up, so right now it's not an island anymore. It is actually just a big rock standing on a big plain of black sand. I showed this island location in one of my 2019 videos from Iceland. So what I'm doing right now is simply just I put on the 50 to 400, shooting at f13 because it's good in regard to the vignetting. ISO 100 gives me a shutter speed of around 1 60th of a second. With image stabilization on, it's more than sufficient. And then I can get a photo right here, where I include a little bit of these rocks, a little bit of these rocks, and then I have the S-curve leading in to the island with the beautiful 
moody clouds above. So we have made it to this quite iconic location with a waterfall here behind me. The only sad thing is that there's not a whole lot of water in the waterfall. So in all honesty, the photo just doesn't really work from this perspective. You can see that the waterfall is supposed to lead up here to the background and to this rock up here. However, with so little water in the waterfall, it just doesn't work. So I have taken another photo from up on the road and I use the road as a leading line leading up to the rock that works way better than the waterfall does right now. Yeah, so that's not going to win any awards, that's for sure. <laughs> so when we headed back to the car, I also tried one of the other smaller waterfalls and I actually think that worked much better than the original composition. So yeah, in the end, as always, it is just about exploring and trying something else if whatever you had in mind does not work. If you want to learn much more about composition, be sure to get my two ebooks on exactly that topic. They're easy to read, they have minimal text and loads of examples so that we can get to the point fast and you can learn something. There are links to both ebooks down in the description of this video. I hope you enjoyed this small adventure through the Icelandic Highlands. If you want to watch even more from Iceland, just explore my YouTube channel. There are loads of videos there. And especially watch my video from last week. I think it's one of my best videos I've ever created on this channel. See you next time.